This is Shred, and today I'm going to play the Tornado of Souls solo in a tornado. <laughs> nah, just kidding. I bet you'd like that though, wouldn't you? In this video, we'll be looking at the theory behind Koji Kondo's music in the Zelda video game series. The Legend of Zelda was released in 1986 and is widely considered to be one of Nintendo's most successful game series. So if 2020's got you down needing a heart refill, link up with me and let's explore this incredible music. In this lesson, we'll dissect the musical mechanics behind the main theme, the fairy fountain theme, the secret sound, and also the chest opening music. Score the guitar tabs for all the music in this video at my Patreon page below. All I ask in return is your soul. <laughs> Small price to pay for my scale bible, chord bible, and music theory course. So sign your name in blood and ascend to ultimate guitar power. <laughs> There's been many variations of the Zelda franchise since the mid-1980s, with Koji Kondo's musical themes remaining a staple of the experience. We'll begin our journey with the main theme. This cue is in the key of B-flat in a march-like style. The quarter notes and eighth note triplets in the bass line provide the primary engine, driving Link forwards on his hero's journey. The iconic melody begins on the tonic note B flat, then proceeds to the dominant F before a stepwise ascending run, covering a full octave. One thing I've noticed about Koji Kondo is he's a master of chromaticism, or using notes that are outside of the key. The neighboring chromatic tones in the bass bring interest and a sense of movement in the music. A chromatic neighboring tone is a note that moves by half step, then returns back to the original note. I wish Koji was my neighbor. <laughs> Speaking of bass lines, this progression uses the classic Andalusian cadence. An Andalusian cadence descends in whole steps before arriving at the five chord, producing a delicious moment of tension that propels us back to the one. The Andalusian cadence is popular in the flamenco style of music. Now I couldn't help taking a crack at making a metal version of the main theme. That's what guitarists do. We ruin things. Yes. My first introduction to the Zelda series was in 1998 with the release of Ocarina of Time on the Nintendo 64. The music is well crafted to contribute the perfect accompaniment for Link's environments and experiences. The Fairy Fountain theme is one of Zelda's most recognizable cues. This music plays when you recover your health in the Fairy Fountain. And let's be honest, what's more rejuvenating than bathing with a bunch of fairy babes? 69 hearts for me. <laughs> a series of C7 arpeggios using a harp glissando kick off the piece. I like to use this as a hybrid picking exercise on guitar.
bizarre series of descending arpeggios follow, sewed together with evil chromatic neighboring tones. I want to emphasize that Koji Kondo's mastery of chromaticism is really what brings this piece to life. Always navigating to unexpected places before returning us safely home. Now this is challenging for me to play in guitar, but it's a great exercise for your sweet picking. Let's watch me struggle through it. The chord qualities here are very adventurous to say the least. Basically, Kondo is choosing a chord quality like G minor, then starts introducing chromatic notes for tasty fairy flavor. Makes me want to buy a harp so I can impress the babes with this piece. <laughs> when opening a chest in Zelda's Ocarina of Time, this music plays. Pure delicious dissonance. One thing I've noticed in Koji Kondo's music is his use of parallel motion. Taking the same melodic sequence and moving it around chromatically. Kondo's weapon of choice here is the whole tone scale, which has a very mysterious spooky quality. The whole tone scale contains six notes, each a whole step apart. What's interesting here is that Koji is ascending through the first four notes of the scale before repeating the figure up a half step. This plays with our expectations, heightening our excitement for what's to come with whole tone sequences separated by half steps. <laughs> The cue finishes with a clashing series of tritones or augmented fourth intervals. These intervals contain six half steps, so all you gotta do is play them three times in a row and you get six, six, six. Let's see, every row, row, Hope you got something good. When you find the entrance to a secret place in Zelda A Link to the Past, this haunting sequence of notes plays. Relying on his signature chromatic approach, Kondo constructs two phrases. One that descends using a seemingly unrelated series of notes, and one that ascends. The first part confuses our ears, refusing to establish a tonic note or center and the second phrase ascends an A-flat augmented triad. Now, an augmented triad is just like a major chord, except you raise the fifth degree one half step. The effect of these melodic sequences is indeed one of surprise and secrecy. Let's hear it on the greatest instrument of all time, the double ultra contrabassoon. I mean, the electric guitar. Studying brilliant composers like Koji Kondo yields a high reward. Things like the Andalusian cadence and chromaticism can be incorporated into your own style and way of doing things. With this newfound compositional power, you may even be able to write a song that's better than WAP. <laughs> Grab the tabs for guitar below at my Patreon page. I've got a mountain of guitar and music theory resources there as well if you want to nerd out. I'm also accepting submissions for my scale and chord bible if you want to contribute your own musical ideas. Let me know what your favorite Zelda music is, and until next time, stay evil. You thought I was going to say shred till you're dead, didn't you? <laughs>